it's Vincent here, and today I'm doing something a bit different, but something I'm actually super excited to do. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but one reason why I haven't done it yet is I actually feel like a lot of people honestly won't really care about it. But this is something I personally feel passionate about, it's something I really wanted to do. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So basically, if you are a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! or just a fan of card games in general, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legend of Blue Eyes is the start of a of basically a new era for card games it was the first set of Yu-Gi-Oh! and when it came out all the kids rejoiced it was super excited i remember picking up so many of these card packs opening them up and playing with my friends and it was so much fun now as we revisit it though and we look back they have some of the most broken cards ever printed some some really ridiculous cards and then they also have cards that were very unplayable and not just unplayable like to today's standards but like unplayable as soon as they were released. They were dead on arrival. So I thought, hmm, I'm a game designer and a lot of video games have been doing sort of like the director's cut or the publisher's cut, that kind of thing, of like how they would remix things based on if they had more control over it. So I was thinking like, huh, what if I did like a game designer cut, my game designer cut, if I were to remake The Legend of Blue Eyes? Now, with that being said, I would like to first and foremost say that I personally uh, wouldn't go back and change a thing. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is what it is currently because of where it came from, and I wouldn't want to change that. However, I do think that they made some very questionable game design decisions, and so if you're a fan of card game design and game design in general, I figured it'd be cool for me to walk you through some of the reasons why I made these different choices, and why I think it could have helped improve the game for the future, um, and just provided a lot more variety and interesting options and choices. Now that being said, I don't know that I'm going to go through every single card because that would take a long time, but if you're interested in this kind of stuff, then consider supporting me on Patreon because not only do you get behind the scenes artwork, you get shoutouts, you get your name golden blazing in Discord, you get um, vlogs and so much more, you also get my game design notes. So <sighs> yeah, without further ado, let's jump into this because I am super excited. So we have the Trihorn Dragon, the infamous Trihorn Dra Dragon. Now. He actually was never that infamous. He was a secret rare for some reason, but in the Legend of Blue Eyes set, where they introduced Blue Eyes White Dragon, Blue Eyes White Dragon was two tribute summons and had 3,000 attack and 2,500 defense. The Trihorn Dragon was nothing but a weaker version of that that also had no effect. So effectively, if you pulled a secret rare from the set, it wasn't the Blue Eyes. It was this dragon who was dumber looking and had no reason to be playing. E like, the Blue Eyes was easier to get and was better. And I just don't think that makes any sense. So, I was thinking, okay, how could we make Trihorn Dragon super cool? So, if you look at his effect here, we bumped up his attack some and, and his defense. And he says, whenever Trihorn Dragon deals battle damage to your opponent, inflict that amount times three. This only works when Trihorn Dragon is battling monsters. So... Obviously, if you just hit someone in the face, that would be insane. You would just, like, one-hit kill them. So I had his effect only apply when battling monsters to help curb that ability that could potentially be very broken and would, of course, be abused. But the idea of him being able to hit monsters and being able to smack them in the face for times three would give you a reason to play him over Blue-Eyes White Dragon, even though Blue-Eyes White Dragon goes on to having more support. So I just thought that'd be really cool. For Blue Eyes White Dragon, we kept his same stats, which is still stronger than the Trihorn Dragon, but we gave him a keyword, which is Summon, which is anytime he's summoned, uh, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls except the one with the highest attack. I felt like that was a really cool ability because it keeps your opponent's monster uh, in play that is the biggest rival and the biggest challenge for Blue Eyes, but it gives him a little bit more nuance, and it doesn't strictly make him better than the Trihorn Dragon either because the Trihorn Dragon, you could really smack someone really hard in the face with that. Then we have this uh, Beast Warrior over here. Let's give a look at him. See, Hitatsumi Giant. This guy originally is like a 1,200 attack useless monster, but we bumped him up to the 1,500 attack. It says, summon change an opponent's monster to de defense position. Um, I think that would be really neat and cool. Just beat him over the head with a club. Gives him some utility. Of course, he wouldn't be playable in today's meta, but you know, for back in the day, it's a very simple ability that could have been used pretty well. We have the Flame Swordsman, Fusion Summon Monster. Um, I kept all the Fusion Summons the same in terms of them using the same materials, but I did bump up their stats because, man, the Fusion Summons are so terrible. You have to have two of the exact 
types of monsters you need for your materials, and you have to have a polymerization, and you have to combine those monsters and use the polymerization to get one monster that is usually very weak and can easily be destroyed. It is bogus, to say the least. So, I boosted up his stats, and I gave them a new mechanic for these very, very weak fusion monsters. Now, this wouldn't be a mechanic for every fusion monster, but for the ones that need it, they have Vivid, which says anytime you fusion summon this monster, you draw a card. Uh, and then, that way you can help replace the polymerization, and it says if this monster deals damage to a dinosaur, destroy that monster. Uh, then inflict 500 damage to, to your opponent. So... That deals with like him going up against Rex, you know, as Joey's playing the Flame Swordsman, goes against Rex, slays the dinosaurs, and fire does damage to the face. It makes sense flavorfully. 2300 attack. I think it would actually be played if you play with this set. So it'd be my, my hope and goal in mind. One day we can play with just this revised Legend of Blue Eyes set and see what kind of decks people could make. Because I feel like it'd be so fun to be able to play with the old card art, but play with these sort of revised abilities. With the Skull Servant, I kept the stats the same, but he says whenever this monster is destroyed in battle, you get to summon up to two Skull Servant tokens with 300 attack and 200 defense. These tokens cannot be tributed. So it just helps you spam the field with the Skull ser Servants. You can't use them for tribute, but it could be really good for defending yourself. We have Dart Magician, which I wanted to keep the same attacks uh, and defense uh, for their stats. Because, you know, the Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon are so iconic, I just felt like it'd be a shame to change that. But similar to the Blue Eyes White Dragon with destroying all your opponent's monsters except for the highest one, you get to summon to destroy all spells and trap cards your opponent controls, which is very, very powerful, I'm aware. But, you know, the Trihorn Dragon and Blue Eyes are stronger in battle, so I needed to have uh, the Dark Magician to have a heftier ability there. Now, also, I think with the summon mechanic, this might just be for, like, the tribute summons. Whenever you tribute summon them, I think maybe it should exclude special summons. Because later on, that could be heavily abused. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure summon should just stick with tribute summon. So, we'll, we'll do that. Guy of the Fierce Knight, again, double tribute. Except, Guy of the Fierce Knight has even weaker stats than the other ones. But, I gave him Monsters You Control, gain Pierce. Which basically it says this uh, This should really say this monster deals piercing damage. I'm used to some of my own card language here. But we'll do this monster deals piercing damage. Um, that, I, I don't think he would be played over, say, the Dark Magician. But I do think there would be an argument to play him. Especially with him being a warrior. For Celtic Guardian, um, I wanted to keep some monsters kind of more basic. But I just boosted up his attack and defense from 1400 and 1200 to 1800, 1600, so he'd at least be playable in this first set. We have Basic Insect. Whenever this monster is flip summoned, you can search your deck for a level 4 or lower insect monster, put it in face down position. Uh, Mammoth Graveyard. Whenever this monster dies, excavate the top three cards of your deck. So excavate is like putting the, uh, the top cards of your deck into your graveyard. Uh, we have Silver Fang. Whenever this monster does battle damage, you may search your deck for another silver fang or full moon and add it to your hand i feel like that'd be so cool because silver fang is very weak you know only 1200 attack but being able to search your deck out for more silver fangs or for the the moon which no one plays those cards like no one at all to give them the to to give them some more utility i think would be awesome also i'm pretty sure it's not a beast warrior but just a beast uh, we have Dark Gray, which is also, I believe, just a beast. And that monster says that at the end of every turn, you may shuffle this and every and any other monsters you control into face down position. Um, I feel like that would be an interesting ability. A lot of control shenanigans go on there. Trial of Nightmare has Pierce because he's piercing through the coffin. I think that makes sense, especially with a 1300 attack. Not very strong for a monster, but it says this monster gains plus 400 attack when attacking a face down defense position monster. So. You know, I think that gives them some utility, some uh, pretty cool stuff. And it doesn't outclass the monsters that will come out later, such as the Spear Dragon. So there's still an argument to play Spear Dragon, but there's still an argument to be playing Trial of Nightmare. Then we have Numerico, which is whenever this monster does battle damage to your opponent, you may select a card from their hand and reveal it. If that's a monster card, they must banish it. Okay, so that's a cool effect. The 13th Grave, you may special summon this monster from your hand or deck if you have exactly 13 cards in it limit once per turn so 
This would have been crazy to have special summoning from your deck this early on in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I feel like it's such a very niche ability and it'd be very hard to pull off and it's for a very weak monster. But I feel like, you know, it fits him with the uh, the name the 13th Grave. Uh, Charboon the Fire Knight, I always thought it looked so cool as a kid. But man, did he suck. He was like a, a fusion monster with only like 800 attack or something. It was so stupid. So let's boost his attack up to 1800. Give him Vivid so you get to draw your card back. And it says whenever this monster destroys another monster, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. So he's still not good. But he might be playable at least for a little bit in the first set. So that's my take on it. Then you have the Flame Manipulator. Which still, not very good stats. I think I kept his stats the same. And he says, once during your turn, you may discard one fire monster or spell uh, card to draw another card, or to draw a card from your deck. Um, so I think that's cool. And it's interesting that you discard the card before you draw it. So it actually is a bit worse than drawing than discarding. Because you might actually discard something that is better than what you end up drawing. But it does give you that option. And having utility in a card game is not to be uh, taken lightly. It's, it's a super powerful ability. Uh, we have Monster Egg, which uh, I just made have higher defense, so it can be uh, more of a defense candidate. Uh, he is a warrior, which can be helpful. We have Fire Grass. This monster also has the fire attribute. You'd think Fire Grass would be a fire attribute monster, but I've realized in this set there's a lot of monsters that, don't, like Dark Fire Dragon, you know, is a fire type, but he kind of feels like he should be a dark type, so I gave him that ability there. And uh, he has Vivid as well, and I boost up his attack. Dark King of the Abyss, your Dark Monsters gain plus 400 attack. You know, he's pretty weak, but he could help you kind of overrun your opponents if you're playing with Dark Monsters, which would be cool. Fiend Reflection number two, whenever this monster is targeted by a trap card, you may special summon a level four or lower Fiend Monster from your hand. Okay, so again, I mean, playing with, you could play like a, um, a Dark Summoning deck, which would be so cool. Fusionist. Uh, this one has Vivid twice, which I think would be exciting to see. Because this monster, I mean, 900, 700, I think that's the exact stats it had before, so I kept it the same. But, I mean, you get to draw two cards out of it, so maybe that could be okay. Um, and then we have the Petite Angle, which is supposed to be the Petite Angel. But, you know, I, I still don't know if that's playable at all, you know. But I just feel like it'd be at least interesting to see what people can do with it. Turtle Tiger, I believe I kept the exact same, you know. He's a, he's a weak card, but I need to keep some cards uh, as basic as possible because when you have a set, especially if it's your first set, you need it to be basic. And that's one thing the original set actually did really well in Yu-Gi-Oh! is it was very much the basics of the game. And that's why I also wouldn't say that I would change it to reflect this. But I do, again, think they made some weird choices, and I do think it could have used maybe a little bit more of this sort of thing uh, to be really fun and to not, you know, break things. But uh, Petite Dragon, you may discard this card to fuse two monsters. Uh, Petite Angel has the same effect. And then the... Uh, so, so these are kind of like polymerization uh, substitutes. So you could actually run a vivid polymerization deck uh, using these guys, which I think would be a lot of fun. Uh, the Hypnotoma Soul, you can discard this card to inflict 500 damage. Um, so that would be fun. Aquamador, 1200, 2000. I believe that's the same stats as he already had. We have the... Cage Musha, the Blue Flame, another card I loved as a kid. I thought he looked so cool. His name was cool, and yet he was terrible. His stats were terrible. It was awful to play that guy. But I put, this card could be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a fire monster. So I feel like that'd be real kick-ass, and uh, I don't know. that would be fun to do. It at least makes them somewhat playable until um, those monsters come out later with the higher stats that have those effects. We have Flame Ghost, which is 1,500, 1,300 which is the same uh, fusions here. He has Vivid, and it says he's also considered a fire monster, so probably not, I mean, probably not playable. I was going to say, like, man, this Flame Ghost is dark. It just doesn't make sense. Anyways, Two Mouth Dark Ruler. 900, 700, very weak stats. This card is also a dark attribute monster, as well as being a dinosaur and thunder monster, so a lot of weird stuff going on there. You have Dissolver Rock. Uh, whenever you play a fire or pyro card, increase this monster's attack by 1,000 until the end of turn. So that makes it so he can hit up there with the Gemini Elf that will come out later, but only whenever you're playing your Fire and Pyro Synergy. So it'd be interesting to see that as a deck strategy. I just feel like this really opens up a lot of strategies with this set because 
I know Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't really have archetypes when it came out, but with something like this, you would have a fire and pyro ar archetype. You would have the the uh, dark um, like a dark army archetype. You have a fusion archetype. And that's just from like what has kind of been put together so far here. Uh, there'd probably be like a dragon, like big beats archetype, which would be fun. Just a lot of cool stuff. We have root water. Whenever you play a water or fish card, increase your life points by 1,000. I mean, man, like that could be a whole archetype in itself, just running root waters and trying to play water and fish types, even if they're subpar, just to gain all those life points. The Furious Sea King at the 1800, 1700 stats. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, Green Phantom King, if you control at least three plant monsters, you cannot be attacked. I can see there being like a control life gain deck going with those guys. Ray and Temperature, if you control five or more face down cards, increase the attack and defense of this by 1,000. Um, so I feel like that would be a cool strategy for like a uh, control deck. King Fog, this monster also has the wind attribute, so nothing too special there. And Mystical Sheep, you got the 800, 1800. Masaki, the Legendary Swordsman, another card I love growing up that was unplayable. If an opponent's monster attacks this monster while in face down or in defense position, and that, that player takes damage, destroy that monster. If the attack of a monster that attacks this monster is lower than the defense of the card, destroy the attacking monster. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I just kind of repeated myself twice there, but you get the idea there. Has the basically the Dez Kangaroo uh, effect, which would have been nice, you know, right out the gate. It's still usable and playable. You got Karama, uh, summon, return a spell or trap card to its owner's hand. Um, so that means one in play, by the way, is what I meant by that. We got the Legendary Sword, a warrior type monster, increases their attack and defense by 500. So I think for these, I kept them mostly the same, but I boosted it up. Instead of it going from like 200 attack, it's 500, uh, just to make them more usable. We have the uh, Dragon Capture Jar, I kept the same. We have um, all the those equipment the same. I added this new keyword called Limited. So that's just for your spells that are obviously more powerful, like Dark Hole and Regeke. We just have the limited keyword. So right out the gate, you can only run one. We don't have to take up space on the, the forbidden list or the restricted list. Like we, we can just go ahead and get it right out the gate where everyone knows without having to look anything up that those guys are limited. Um, Red Medicine, uh, originally it was like heal five or something, 500. So 1200 is just something that I think would actually make it pretty playable maybe the 1200 is too much for this like weaker state of Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's just like life gain cards like on their own aren't very good like there can be cards that give you life that are really good but it's always like attached to some other positive effect when it's just a card when it's using up the entire card to gain life it tends to not be that good we have sparks which inflicts 200 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points and then you can play or put a hit no time card from your graveyard to your hand if you do banish this card trying to make that card playable we got the inflict 500 damage so we have kind of a burn strategy that could be cooking up here we have fissure staying the same we have trap all staying the same uh, i believe polymerization staying the same yep we have remove trap being the same uh let's see two pronged attack only activate during your turn select two monsters you control those monsters can attack destroy target monster your opponent controls that's my way of trying to make it a little bit better and flavorful where you use both your monsters and they attack your opponent's monster and kill it. So that'd actually be pretty cool. Mystical Elf, I love that card. Uh, but I gave her a little ability to boost her up a little bit so she'd be a little bit more playable because currently she is she's right out the gate weaker than the Giant Soldier of Sto Stone. There's no reason to play her over the Giant Soldier of Stone. So I gave her this effect. Whenever Vivid triggers for you, you may draw an additional card and discard one card. So she helps you filter through your Palmerizations which I think would be cool. We got Typhon. Uh, this monster gains an additional 300 attack when Mountain is in play because it says he's most effective for Mountain. So I feel like, hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, Beaver Warrior. This monster gains an additional 300 defense when Sogun's in play. So cool stuff there. We got, uh, what is this? Gravedigger Ghoul. Select up to five monsters instead of two cards or whatever from your uh, opponent's graveyard and banish them. Gain 200 life points for every card banished this way. Like that could be a pretty powerful card um, against the right decks. A good side deck card, at least. Um, Carbonella Warrior, another card that was trash back, you know, in the original game. But this one has Vivid, and uh, it says once during every player's battle phase, you may change the position of any monsters. Um, 
Yeah, no, that seems... Okay, I might have to reword that. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just force it where your opponents can never attack you, but... I think the idea is you, you can kind of shift things around a little bit at least, though, um, which I think would be a lot of fun. Uh, Giant Soldier of Stolen already is rocking the highest attack and defense uh, when you count those together without needing Tribute Summon, so I went ahead and just kept him the same because, again, I, I need some vanilla monsters in here as well. Urabi boosts up his attack to 18, 1200. Uh, Red Eyes Blake Dragon, double Tribute Summon monster, not playable in the original game until a lot of support came out for him, so with this one I have Summon. Inflict 1,000 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points, limit once per turn. Uh, so I feel like that just that could be really cool, like a good finisher for the burn deck. Reaper of the Cards, another card that I love that is just not playable. I got rid of his dumb like 1370, 1920 uh, stats, even though it's really funny to me. I kind of want to run them just for that uh, effect there. But anyways, he has flips like one card on the field in a player's hand or extra deck and banish it. Cards chosen from the hand or extra deck must be done at random. I feel like that's very on flavor and would make him maybe playable. We'll see. Um, we have Witty Phantom at the 18-1200. We have Larvus. Uh, summon, change the position of one monster, level 3 or lower, to defense position. So, could be pretty cool. Hard Armor, flip, destroy target warrior. Maneater Plant. Wait. Maneater Plant destroys the, uh, the warrior. That makes sense. Okay. Because he's a man eater. And then we have the Heart Armor, which is destroy target level 4 or lower zombie in play. Um, the M Warriors are both pretty weak, but they do make the Carbonala Soldier, which, as you can tell, had a pretty strong effect, so maybe maybe that's why his effect's so strong. Spirit of the Harp, 800 attack, 2,000 defense. Whenever Vivid triggers for you, you may draw an additional card and discard one. So basically, made it the exact same as Mystical Elf. You can pick and choose if you want to run both or if you want to run just one or the other. Armel, uh, we got the basic stat line over here. Could think of nothing cool for them, so we're just going to keep that one as a terrible card. Uh, I think it's also a fusion summon material, so that kind of makes it better, you know, if you wanted to use the uh, fusion deck over there. I uh, got Terra the Terrible. Uh, decent stat line for this game. And then whenever your opponent summons a monster, it must enter face down to Vent's position unless they allow you to draw one card. I feel like that would be awesome. I, I love that effect. Um, but, you know, got the Frenzied Panda, 1800, 1200. Got the Kumatoko with the 700, 1400. So not the best stat line. But it says, if an opponent's monster attacks this... Okay, so it's the uh, Des Kangaroo ability there, which is cool. Uh, and that works for insects because there's some insect strategies going on in here. We've got the Meta Bat, which is uh, you may discard two dark monsters and or spells from your hand to destroy any one card in play. That's a nice utility spell, but you are having to pitch a lot of cards for that. Then you have the Enchanting Mermaid, which is the, the fish that uh, says, Warriors, your opponent controls must attack if able. Whenever an opponent's warrior attacks, destroy it before damage calculation. Oh, that would be brutal against the warrior deck. Can run it in your water deck. Fire Yaru, uh, just your 1800-1200 Pyro monster. Goes great in the burn or Pyro deck. Dragonus, the Wicked Knight. We have another warrior, but this one's a fusion summon that says... Vivid, and it says, when monsters you control are unaffected by your opponent's spell and trap cards. So that's a cool one. The one-eyed shield dragon, get a vanilla there, because he's also a fusion monster. Dark energy. Um, so a lot of these are just your basic equip spells that are boosted up. And then, let's see. Uh, is this the same? Stop defense, select one of your opponent's monsters. Yeah, so that's the same. Uh, those guys are the same. We have the final flame, which is... Uh, Inflict 600 damage to your opponent. And if this is the last card in your hand, inflict 1,200 damage instead. So that's pretty brutal. Uh, you definitely don't want to end up having two of those in your hand at one time. Goblin Secret Remedy. You and your opponent sir, each uh, secretly choose a number in multiples of 100. Then reveal your numbers. The player with the highest number takes up much damage and draws one card. The player with the lowest number gains that many life points. So that would be interesting. Uh, Swords of Revealing Light stays the same because it's an awesome card. Got the metal dragon over here with the the fusion, and I always thought that was, that card was so cool, uh, but it was not playable at all. But I said it's also considered a dragon as well as a machine, vivid, and whenever this monster attacks a monster, it gains attack equal to half of that monster. Um, yeah, so that'd be cool. Spike Cedra. In the in the original game, this card sucks so much, but it says th this one says this monster gains one thousand attack when battling a water monster. So. Could be a water monster that's like an anti-water deck monster, which would be interesting. The Tripwire Beast, whenever your opponent attacks, um, they take 300 points of direct damage to their life points. 
Uh, so that one probably won't be played, but maybe it could be played in like the burn deck. Skull Red Bird, um, banish one monster in a graveyard, so it gives some utility. Makes sense because it's like a Vulture Bird. Got the Arm Ninja, the exact same because he's decent already. Flower Wolf. Uh, this one has Vivid, and then once during each turn, if you would search your deck for one or more cards, you may also search your deck for an equip spell and add it to your hand. That's also why I kept this fusion monster fairly weak, um, all things considered for what you have to put into it, but that effect could be could be a whole deck strategy in itself. Got the Maneater Bug, which we kept the same because that's a very good card in the set. Sandstone, I just beefed this guy up, but he's just a, he's just a vanilla guy. Hain Hain, we got the, uh, got, is the same. He does get outclassed by the Penguin Soldier, which comes later, but, you know, for the time being in the set, I think Hain Hain's still playable, so I kept him the same. Uh, don't know how to pronounce that, but, you know, just kept that as kind of a basic monster, too. Still Ogre, number one, uh, is if you tribute an Earth monster to summon this card, then you may return an opponent's creature back to the top of its owner's deck. So a very powerful effect. But the monster itself has a weak stat line, so that's to help mitigate whether or not you want to play it. Lesser Dragon counts as two tributes for the Dragon Monsters, which could be really cool. You could have a Dragon deck going on with this uh, set. We got the Dark World Thorns, which is the 1200-1900, which, hey, it's playable. It's a plant. You could use it with the, the Green Prince or whatever, the Phantom King. Uh, Drilling Lizard is 900-800. It gains 1,000 attack when attacking Warriors. So that thing could just be a beast, a good side deck card when going up against the warrior deck. Armored Starfish is uh, you know fairly weak, but whenever you flip it, you can rearrange the top three cards of your deck, so it could be super awesome in control strategies. The Succubus Knight, this monster is also a spellcaster, and whenever you attack a monster, look at the top card of your deck, you may banish that card, so it helps you filter through your deck so you get good draws, which would be awesome. We also have Monster Reborn and Pot of Greed, which I kept... The same except for Pot of Greed. I put that you banish it after you play it. Still would probably get banned, but you know, I wanted to keep it as, as similar as one could. So, you know, we'll see. But at least with that, you won't be able to pull it back with things like Magician of Faith. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Exodia pieces, which are the same. And then we have Gaia, the Dragon Champion, to round out the set which is the same stats, I believe, but we have Vivid and Pierce, so he can deal the piercing damage. You get to draw a card off of him. And then Monsters you control gain plus 100 attack for every dark monster in play and in all graveyards. A lot of people love dark monsters, so it'd be super fun to pull him out as a counter to them. And that reminds me, I do not remember seeing Curse of Dragon in this list, but I know the Curse of Dragon is here somewhere. I love Curse of Dragon. I always thought he's a super cool card, has a cool name. But he just was not playable. You know, one tribute for the uh, 2000 attack monster just was not going to cut it. Uh, here we go. So the Curse of Dragon, I must have accidentally skipped. But I put this monster gains plus 100 attack for every dark monster in play and in every player's graveyard. So that could be a major, major threat against a lot of decks. And I think that would be super cool. And the idea for that mechanic actually came from the flavor text which is that he draws upon the power of darkness from everywhere or something like that. And for a lot of these abilities, that's what where I came up. I didn't just pull these out of my butt. Like, like Carbonala Warrior says something. I think it deals with, like, uh, the Magnet Soldiers or, you know, the M Warrior stands for Magnet or something. I don't know, but, like, I figured Magnets, you know, move back and forth and stuff. I don't know. Like, I, I really tried hard to, like, pull out the flavor of the cards to match something that would be fun and unique and create new archetypes for the game. But anyways, that's my Legend of Blue Eyes set reimagined in the vindicated way. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know, and I might do more in the series because the Lord knows there's tons of Yu-Gi-Oh sets, and it'd be interesting. Like, honestly, I'd just be fascinated and have so much fun playing the Legend of Blue Eyes set reimagined. But uh, let me know what you thought, if you like Yu-Gi-Oh, or even if you don't, but you've been interested and you've been watching the content for this whole time, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot as a small creator. It really does a lot for the channel, for me and what I'm trying to build and have been building all these years. So thank you so much. And as always, stay awesome. I have no choice. It's time to save the world. <laughs>